Hi and welcome to Joe's Camera. So in today's program, we're going to go through May's entries of the Khalakhadi Photographic Competition. And um, we're going to go through first uh, all of the entries, just scroll through so that you can get a, a, a look at a glance of all the images. And then we're going to go to a, a subfolder where we've selected uh, around nine or ten, I don't know how many exactly. Uh, and then from there, we go through to the finalists. We've got 160 entries. And how does this put the names of the entrance below the images so it makes it easier for me to select. What helps with a big selection like this is one can at a glance see where the good compositions are. And composition, I'm talking about the whole spectrum of foundations, uh, not just the rule of third, but also the, the colors, the contrasts, the lights and darks, the patterns and the shades and the leading lines, and all of that together to make a good image. If we go quickly, and I can quickly open this one. This is a wildcat. Beautiful because the environment was um, actually captured with the cat. It's typical, the, the bottom side of a camel thorn tree, the brushes, and it, and it gets all the grass that grows up and the cat underneath. Quickly go through, what a beautiful portrait of the lion, the light in the one eye, and it basically glances right through the lens onto the photographer. We've had some good clean images. Look at this one of the red-headed finch with the male and female. Beautiful, absolutely perfect portrait of the pair of birds. And then we've received some black and whites, a beautiful black and white with the three thorn bush branches only standing out with the cheetah. Quickly at a glance, look at this colors of the hyena, but of course it's, it's a bit overdone. So it'll be a negative for this image. This image is from here, yeah, Heinrich Hüller, uh, sending the Springbok and he's sending a very long story about the sequence of photographs that he sent. He wanted to enter the sequence of images of the Springbok kill by the cheetah and he also said that he, he realizes that we can't judge the group of photos. We can maybe enter a category like that in future if there's a sequence of events that together tells the story better than the single image. It's not going to work for this competition currently because we, we're looking for images that can be blown up. One actually wants to get the whole story in one image. Um, so we're not going to accept the five images in a series. It, it tells more a story of a springbok that's been killed by the cheetah and you can see the tracks of the vehicle right close by and too close for the cheetah and that's the story about this images is the cheetah actually killed the springbok and the vehicles totally ignored the rules and uh, take taken cognizance of of the nature and the behavior of animals and it chased the cheetah off from its kill and could have very easily deprived it of a of a hunt especially for the for the young ones as well for the cubs so this is the sequence the cheetah killed the springbok and when the vehicles left you can look at all that tracks in the right right hand corner there all the tracks that came so close to the kill that they actually chased the cheetah away and the cheetah pulls it underneath the bushes and they can start eating a very sad story but unfortunately we get these type of people that that i don't know what they do in the calari they belong on the driving or somewhere in Santon in the road, but this is, that, that just upsets me. Scroll through, and out of these, I'm not going to go through all of them, although it's a beautiful picture to go through all of them. It's like a movie. It's the best of every photographer's visit that we are actually looking at here. Very difficult to judge this month. And out of those, we thought it good to select these ones, and at a glance, it should also tell you from a compositional point of view, if you look at the whole group of images, uh, uh, and it gives you an idea how good it was. If you just look at the group of these shots over here, it's uh, coffee table book quality. So if we go through them, a very soft portrait, it seems like it could have rained or something outside, but I absolutely love how this line has been framed by the camel thorn tree and then the branches on top and then also the bushes uh, in front. And on that plane over there, it's quite clean. So this is a this is a typical Kalahari image that one can put on a wall and it's, uh, it's the softer side of a line that's been displayed. This is, this is excellent and it, it tells a big story of the small sparrows, I think, and the batelier at the back. And it is almost a dreamlike image where the sparrow dreams of being a, a batelier to fly high up in the sky and glide all over the Kalari and so on. So a beautiful 
backdrop and it makes you think twice and look twice at the image. This one, because of its perfect quality and, and composition and the clean background and some of the s small animals of the Kalari that's that's been enlarged because of the size of the of the lens or the zoom capabilities of the lens. Beautiful image. I like this black and white. I always love black and white. It allows one to interpret in, um, in various ways a image by removing the colors and keeping it monotone. And from a black and white or monotone, one can actually do a lot. You can do a sepia of this. You can bring in a little bit of green, but I truly love this because it, it puts the attention squarely on, on the cheetah itself. I like the fact that it's been composed right towards the right. So it gives all that space of the cheetah and specifically the cheetah because they, they look quite far in the distance for Springbok that approaches. So it gives you that idea that the Springbok always looks beyond the first and the second camel fawns all down the riverbed for Springbok to approach. The the clouds on top of this image and, and the pose of the giraffe makes this image uh, interesting and that one bush that they're standing over, um, one could have maybe cropped a little bit on, on the right hand side of here to balance the bush but to keep the camel, the uh, giraffes still in the thirds. Um, the If you look at layers or levels you've got this layer of soil then you've got this green bush as a second layer then you've got the interest section where the giraffes are in and then you've got that layer of clouds and as we think it could also be an extremely powerful image in black and white i'm so glad this came in this really speaks to us um it, it also depicts the dunes and the grasses and the pans some vital attributes uh, of the landscapes of the Kalari with that beams of light that on its own is normally a subject that one chases with a camera. The road that's the leading road into that takes the eye into the salt pans and also into the, the distant beams of light. Um, if one has been in the inner felt of the Kalari, this is a this is a beautiful picture and it just wakes up some emotions. This portrait, uh, we've selected this portrait from the other portraits because it's got one element of composition better than the others and that's basically the only thing that stands out and that is the different colors and, and colors and pastel colors are very important elements of composition that a lot of people ignore. So so the colors in this image and the, the pastel pinkish reddish plus the blue on top and the, and the greens and the very soft glance of this le f uh, female lioness almost like a model is very beautiful. What makes this stand out is of course this beautiful male lion, black mane lion and then the three thorn flowers, something that don't stay too long and we don't get them often in, in the images but when they do appear in the images it just it just adds something to a Kalari image. Over here, it is the softer, not the arid type of atmosphere that you get, but here the line also poses. It looks straight into the eyes. It's not that intimidating. So it's a very soft portrait of a male, also model-like. We love the, the three thorns in the foreground as well. So it's sort of framed with the three thorn bush. A different, almost cobra-like stance of the puff adder standing up on the road. And number one, the clean, if you look at the lines of this image, it's probably, probably one of the most perfect composed images. If you look at the lines of the puff adder, if you look at the foreground cleanliness and the background, absolutely nothing that distorts the eye. And then to crown it all, Gary has gone right down to the level of the snake, actually appears to be below the level of the eyes of the snake, which makes it stand out not one part of the body has been cut out of the image and it looked like it's also just posing for the photographer as a model gary has sent down sending a series of five images that from a composition point of view and from a portrait point of view you can't fault another leopard of gary very clean open uh, it doesn't have any branches in the foreground uh, normally that you get in the killer it's it's not as similar as the kruger or the upper Africa where the leopards are lying clean. So this, the fact that the leopard is clean, lies in a camel thorn tree and it's got that 
the camel thorn branches at the back that sort of covers the light coming in. I think one of the better uh, leopard images that we've seen. Great spotted cuckoo chasing off this starling. Something different, you don't see that quite that often. So it's also center frame looking towards the left. Could have taken maybe a bit of space on the right hand side and remove it. But we think it's quite a unique little image. A beautiful action shot and you can look at the line as well the sea it tells you a story of the specific line but there are some flaws in the editing of the image if you zoom into the image there's um, areas if we're going to blow it up into a naught you please clearly see somewhere it's been cut out and placed back in and uh, i actually agree with doing what he is doing because you know we want that background to be completely um, washed out and distorted so that the attention goes on the line. So so doing that, I agree 100% with, but you can see where it's been cut out. Otherwise, this would have gone right through because I think this is the, the biggest action line. Look at that eye onto the female. So absolutely superb line image. There's only one distraction in this whole image, and that's that little bush if one wants to be perfect. This is one of my favorites. As you can see, there's two entered by Gerard Tron. Uh, there's three entered by Gerard Tron. And this, to me, just stands out because of the artistic. And, and I just want to explain this. Uh, Gerard has, has done a fine art rendition of, of this image. He's, he's worked harder than just taking the image and working on, on, on Photoshop. He's taken the image separately. He's cut it out, he's enhanced it, he's put some heavy contrast to HDR the bird and he put it back in the background. And here yeah, we don't look for flaws like in the previous image. This is a this is a fine art image. It so it it removes itself from reality. This is this is how the artist and, and we see the image. It is how the artist actually felt when he when he did this, and it's a combination of various things. Number one, the image that he's captured on the camera, and also his artistic ability um, to actually edit um, the image and to put it back as a composite onto a normal background. So, so if you look at, um, we can we can we write a whole paragraph on on what this what um, Gerard has done with this image, and what makes it even better, he's entered another image of the male battalier, um, adult battalier. Look at the feather in the mouth, look at the open mouth, look at the eyes staring at the horizon. It actually looks like this background has been reflected into its eyes. The composition rule of thirds or the flow composition, the color, the contrast, the bright reds, the blacks, the beiges, and, and putting it back in a normal background, not not HDRing the, the, the clouds. The clouds are very, very normal and the bird forms a difference. So the bird stands up or out 100% and the clouds just basically uh, emphasizes what the guy has done with the bird. That's now Gerard Tron. So I, I, just, I absolutely love this. Gerard's done the same with this image. It seems like just branches and clouds, but I can assure you this is a very trained eye that's done this and a very artistic person. Fantastic portrait of the baby cab foxes and only the one little shrub bush that we got over here and it's also not cut through it's the whole one so you've got this this and this form forming the three main subjects beautifully uh, the background has been removed by the shade so so all the attention is on this two cape foxes fantastic colors of this blue wildebeest and it, as from a total composition point of view it must go through this once again it just it, it is artistic. Look at the, the relaxed, almost dreamy attitude of this leopard. And if this was color, the branches or the leaves of the camel thorn would have detracted some of the attention from the leopard, number one. It could have also framed the leopard, so it, it cuts both ways. It's not really a negative. But from a black and white point of view, uh, attention is 100% solely on the atmosphere and the peace and relaxed atmosphere that this image of the leopard depicts. Uh, Action-packed movement of these two lines and look at that eye, the pupil of the of the line, and you can the saliva and the water that is actually thrown out of the mouth like that shows that they've been drinking water and the and the brothers come a bit too close for its liking. You can look at the the line; they're similar age. 
probably two brothers. And uh, one can talk about the composition, maybe maybe the eyes, you know, at the frame on top with the ears, if you added the ears and so on. But this, this very cropped zoom gives it a much more uh, serious atmosphere or genre. So you can see that there's full on action. If it, if he zoomed out, he could have maybe brought something else into the frame and take to take attention away. So as is, we're not going to fault it. It's an action image and um, it is fantastic as a portrait of two male lines. This artistic ability uh, to be able to identify lines and patterns and shapes and repetitive patterns and repetitive shapes is and belongs to the more serious fine art photographer. So this, we love this. This is artistic that can go into a wall. It can sell as well. It can go in black and white. You can add some extra contrast in here. You can push the saturation even more to stand out from an artistic point of view. And I don't want to say too much, but from an artistic point of view, there is sort of a triangle that is formed over there. It also looks like three legs. It looks like an eye. So there's something of an elephant in here. And you look at this lines leading towards this center area over here and all the cracks creating some form of harmony, although difficult to explain. A unique sighting of the lynx with the wildcat killed it and something specific. That's why we like it. It's, we haven't seen much of these images or I haven't seen one. Uh, it would have been good if this cat looked straight into the lens or the light was from the other side into them, but nevertheless, something unique. Uh, you can't get a better portrait of two male lines than this. You could have, from an editing of a fine art point of view, pushed some a little bit of saturation and contrast and so on, but you can't fault the background, the foreground. One of the lines are looking straight into the lens. The other one looking at giving us the image or giving us the idea that he's looking at something approaching them, uh, constantly on the lookout, typical line. So a beautiful, perfect portrait. Fantastic, also the two young ones looking at, also a clean background, clean foreground, a bit of a you that's distracting. And here, number one that stands out is the level of the photographer that, that's photographing up towards the line. Um, and a very typical site where the road's been graded to below the level of the riverbeds. And that make, that's what makes it stand out in the Calari from, from Kruger and most of the others is that elevated sides of the roads. If you can get something up there and your camera from below and it's got that blue and it's also still got the three thorn flowers in there, a beautiful line. It's got a bit of a droopy left eye, which makes it a saddish sort of look, but you can see there's not a lot of scars in that line. Big mane, black mane, very powerful and must be some dominant line from some area in the color. I don't know why, where this is taken, but also what's interesting about this image and that enhances the composition. If you look at the layers, it's got one layer of the three thorn bushes. It's got another layer of the green trees and the, and the leaves, and it's got another level of blue white. So you've got three distinct uh, colors for a compositional point of view and also spheres of the image from a compositional point of view. The lion is framed on exactly the same the correct spot on the close to the thirds of the lines that we do. But all in all, it complies with a whole lot of foundations of composition and a beautiful image of a line. This line, like Ada says, looks like a Kruger line or a Kenya line. Uh, we love the contrast in this photo. This hair just stands out. I don't know what should have been edited a little bit, but I think it's edited 100%. Um, and uh, beautiful. This is the type of line that the German professional photographers, fine art photographers, would have removed some of the color and kept it a bit of a dew tone or a sepia, sepia color. Maybe a fraction too zoomed in. If you look at the bottom area over here, maybe a, a, a bit down there, a bit more space on the right hand side. Um, if you want to be perfect, but this is a fantastic image. This because of the interest every time a lion goes down and it drops its head to below its shoulders like that and the ears are forward and the eyes zoom in you can see in the eyes of a lion when he's actually seriously looking at something every single line as soon as it's concentrating you can see that the lion is, is interested in something whether he wants to go and play or whether he wants to go and hunt 
um, you can see it on the facial expressions. Once again, from a front point of view, if a lion drops its head below the shoulders and it comes towards you, it's normally a good position for a photograph. And there we go. Those are the ones. At a glance, I can see which ones stand out for me. And I can once again say that it's very difficult to select images from this bunch over here. So let's go to the finalists of May 2021. And there we have them, the finalists for May 2021. And here we go. Edmund Elmer, Franz Lombard, Gerard Tron, with two of them, Gonny Myberg once again, Johan Scherzer, Johan Fischer, Johan Fischer, two images, Rian Bosov and Rian Bosov also two images. And as you can see over here, four of the images were lined, one of a leopard, so half the images are the mega predators, and not because of mega predators, because it's good mega predator images. And there you go, congratulations to the photographers of the May 2021, and see you next month.